Welcome to worship at Willow United Methodist Church for Sunday, the very first Sunday in February, uh, February 7th, 2021. Willow United Methodist Church is in, located in Willow, Alaska. I am Joe D. Dowling Soka. Christina Dowling Soka is my spouse, and together we are the pastors here at the Willow Church. I'm so glad that you have decided to join us for worship. Uh, there's a couple of things you might want to do to be able to fully participate in the service. One is that you go to uh, the Willow United Methodist Church Alaska Facebook page and download the bulletin. And the second is that you might want to print that out so that you have it before you. Today we are doing communion and we are using a Celtic service that comes from the Upper Room Worship Book of the United Methodist Church. And uh, it is uh, a wonderful, great Thanksgiving, but it will help you if you have that before you. We are having uh, communion today, and so you might want to get uh, a beverage to be a part of that service, knowing that not everybody has grape juice at home, and some bread uh, that you can break and serve during that time of our worship service. I want to thank Jeff Bertrand and Melinda Dale for reading our scripture. And as always, uh, I want to thank Mary Lemmings for being our accompanist. Wonderful to have you in worship with us today. I pray that you are blessed. The greeting. God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good. This very day our God has acted. Let us rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's, God's name be praised. Our hymn of praise is joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Feel them for 
Let's join together in saying the opening prayer. O oh God, you have created the universe with such splendor that all of it rises up to praise you. We, the people you have called to be your own, join with sun and moon, stars and mountains in singing hymns of glory to your wonderful name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. I want to invite the children to come and join me, get close to the screen. We're talking about communion today because a little later in our service, we're going to be celebrating communion where we break the bread and drink of the juice. Well, right here, I have the bread. It's right here. Let me uncover it. This is a slice of bread from bread that I use. It's a whole wheat bread, and it's bread that I have toast every morning with. And here we have juice. We have made of the grape right here. Now, these are symbols. They remind us of Jesus. The bread reminds us of Jesus's body, and the juice reminds us of Jesus' blood, the blood that runs through his veins. You have blood running through your veins, and Jesus did too. And we break this bread a little later. We're going to tear it apart. Christina's going to do that. And then we're going to eat of it. And that reminds us that we are a part of Jesus' body. And then we'll be drinking the juice. It reminds us that Jesus' blood is like our blood and it runs through our veins. And we give of ourselves for others, just like Jesus did. Now I'm going to wrap it all back up and get it ready for communion a little later. You might want to get some bread at home and get ready for communion and some juice uh, or milk or water or whatever that you'll be using for the service. Let's pray together. Oh God. Oh God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. And communion. And communion. In a time where we remember Jesus. In a time where we remember Jesus. And what he has done for us. And what he has done for us. Christine is going to lead us in, uh, in Jesus Loves Me. That's what we sing next. Let's sing. Let's sing Jesus Loves Me. Our first scripture this morning is from Mark chapter 2, verses 13 to 19. Jesus went out beside the lake again. The whole crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he continued along, he saw Levi, Alphaeus's son, sitting at a kiosk for collecting taxes. Jesus said to him, follow me. Levi got up and followed him. Jesus sat down to eat at Levi's house. Many tax collectors and sinners were eating with Jesus and his disciples. Indeed, many of them had become his followers. When some of the legal experts from among the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why is he eating with sinners and tax collectors? When Jesus heard it, he said to them, healthy people don't need a doctor, but sick people do. I didn't come to call righteous people, but sinners. 
John's disciples and the Pharisees had a habit of fasting. Some people asked Jesus, why do John's disciples and the Pharisees' disciples fast, but yours don't? Jesus said, the wedding guests can't fast while the groom is with them, can they? As long as they have the groom with them, they can't fast. But the days will come when the groom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. Our hymn is Give Thanks. Sing it with us. Our reading this morning is from the book of Mark. The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a lonely place and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a lonely place by themselves. Now many saw them going and knew them and they ran there on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great throng, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a lonely place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the country and villages round about and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy 200 denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, Five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down by companies upon the green grass. So they sat down in groups by hundreds and by fifties. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. And those who ate the loaves were five thousand men. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you to Melinda and to Jeff for reading our scriptures today. Did you hear these words? Jesus took five loaves, looked up to heaven and blessed them, broke the loaves into pieces and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. Everyone ate until they were full. Let's pray. 
Oh God, we thank you that you are such a God. That you feed us when we're hungry for you. Amen. Well, I've been thinking about communion. Communion, um, on this first Sunday in February, i just thinking of all the first Sundays in February that I have participated in communion. And beyond that, how, um, I, how many communion services I've been a part of. Many as celebrant, where I break the bread and I say the words and I share them with the congregation or a part of that, and, and the times when I have been in the congregation and received communion. And I just don't know how many it has been in 30 years of ministry. Can you think of how many times you have partaked in communion? I imagine it's been a lot, been a lot. Well, communion is an interesting conversation, isn't it? It means so many different things to people. People have different parts of it that they, they truly uh, find important to their lives. Some people see communion as uh, very symbolic, and they do it only because Jesus said to do it. Do this in remembrance of me. And others see that Jesus is present in that bread and in that wine. And they do it because it's a part of their life in a way that is just deeply spiritual and enriching. I don't know how you receive communion. I, I remember a time that when I was serving in England, and a widow of an Anglican priest took me to her high church Anglican service. I'd never been anything like it before. It was amazing. It was amazing. It was a full uh, sanctuary. I think it was in Ripley, Ripley Cathedral, where we were, if I remember correctly. And they had all the incense, all of the holy stuff that in the Methodist church we just don't. Do. And when we got to kneel at the altar, because in that church they came and, and the priest came by and it was uh, and served us, this wonderful lady right next to me kneeling, she was crying. Tears were flowing down her face. This was real for her. And that's always reminded me that communion is very important, very important to many of us. And it's become more and more important to me over the years because I find great teachings in Scripture when Jesus shared the food <laughs> with his disciples and with those around him. Take the scripture that Jeff read to us a little while ago. This is one of the feedings, the feedings of how many people were there? This was the feeding of 5,000 in the gospel according to Mark. Jesus went with the disciples to a deserted place. And the people were so fascinated with him that they followed him. And he had compassion for them. And he fed them. He fed them. You, can, you heard the story and you can read that again. But one of the things that, a couple of things I want to think about with you is that, is that this happens in nature. You see, in the biblical world, in Jesus' world, nature is where everything happens. If you read the Psalms, there's no indoors away from nature. 
Nature is where it happened. It's God's world. Nature is God's creation. It is God's place of living into the psalmist. And so when they talk about the stars or they talk about the trees, they're talking about God's stuff. They don't have a separation, a duality like we do so often today where we separate creation from God and find God's presence within our holy buildings as beautiful as they are. Only they found God in the outdoors and within their temple. Yeah. But God was found. You could observe God in interactions with people and with nature. So this happens outdoors. That's one thing I wanted you to hear, that creation is a part of God. God is a part of creation. God is not creation. God's not a tree or a star or, uh, you know, no, but Though trees and the stars are revelations of God. In the same way that a cup that a potter makes is a revelation of that potter. A little bit of them is in that cup. And it reveals some of their nature. But the potter is not the cup. No. So in our liturgy today, you might want to go ahead if you've downloaded the scripture. We're doing a, uh, if you've downloaded the bulletin, you might want to just look at this moment at how it remembers God. This is a different liturgy than we've ever used here at Willow. It's one of my favorites. It's a part of a more Celtic tradition. And it was uh, written by Gail Ramshaw, and it is in the... Uh, Book of Worship for the Academy for Spiritual Formation is where I found it and have used it from. But it tells the story of God, but it does it by remembering nature. Uh, you look at, I just, I love it. I just love so much of it. You beyond the galaxies, you under the oceans, you inside the leaves, a very Celtic understanding. So when we get into doing the liturgy, in just a few minutes, we're going to be uh, we're going to be using this liturgy that's very uh, nature oriented. Remember, God is not the galaxy, but the galaxies reveal something about God's nature. So that's how that comes, and that's very biblical in that understanding. The other thing, uh, another thing I wanted to bring to you today as I look at our scriptures, remember Jesus doesn't ask who was worthy of being fed. You know that. He doesn't ask who among these people who are hungry, that he has compassion for, uh, should be fed and who shouldn't. There's no there's no discerning of the unworthy or the especially worthy. In fact, Jesus says, I come to serve the unworthy, not the worthy. Now, isn't that something? Now, that comes in the first reading from the second chapter of Mark that Melinda read to us. Jesus says, healthy people don't need a doctor, but sick people do. I didn't come to call righteous people, the worthy people, but sinners, the unworthy. And Jesus feeds them. Huh. That's Interesting, isn't it? Because often we modern folks, and in fact throughout history, we've gotten kind of tribal. We've gotten into this thing of us folks should be fed. Those folks aren't worthy. We get moralistic. 
this person is more worthy than another person because and we decide their characteristics of worthiness and we decide others who are unworthy. They asked Jesus, why is he eating with sinners and tax collectors? Church, that's our job. It's to have communion with the unworthy. It's okay to have communion with those we consider worthy, but our task is to go beyond that little group what Jesus did and we in the church are in communion with Jesus so when we break the bread and we drink of the wine we are remembering some things about Jesus's nature that's what communion does it reminds us of Jesus and who Jesus was and it calls us to be like Jesus so this week I invite you to remember to be in nature and to see God revealed in nature and to remember that we're here to serve the unworthy in the name of Jesus. And one last thing to just to bring to you that I just want to assert to you and for something for you to think about. In our history is this incredible theological notion of Jubilee year. And the other notion that comes out of the Jewish world, the Old Testament, is Sabbath keeping. Well, those are very related things. Jubilee year, real quickly, was a return to the way that God intends the world to be. A world of equality and not inequality. And Sabbath is a day of peace when even the animals rest. It's a day of we come together to remember the God of peace and to worship that God. Communion reminds us not only of Jesus, but also of the call of God to jubilee, equality, a return to the way that God intended, even concept of returning to the garden and Sabbath keeping a day of peace which really should be for us who follow Jesus every day of our lives. We're going to break bread in just a few minutes. Remember, Jesus not only loves you but Jesus loves all, even those who are unworthy. We eat with sinners, and we're better off for it. Amen. Our hymn of praise is Grace Alone.
the great thanksgiving. The Spirit be with you all. And, and also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to God. God. Give thanks to our God. All our thanks and all our praise. Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three. Before all that is, you were God. Outside all we know, you are God. After all is finished, you will be God. Archangels sound the trumpets. Angels teach us their song. Saints pull us into your presence. And this is our song. Holy, holy, holy God, our life, our mercy, our might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Save us, we pray, you beyond all. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Save us, we pray, you beyond all. Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, you beyond the galaxies, you under the oceans, you inside the leaves, you pouring down rain, you opening the flowers, you feeding the insects, you giving us your image, you carrying us through the waters, you holding us in the night, your smile on Sarah and Abraham, your hand with Moses and Miriam, your words through Deborah and Isaiah. You lived as Jesus among us, healing, teaching, dying, rising, inviting us all to your feast. In the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread. And he gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, we remember your Son, his life with the humble, his death among the wretched, his resurrection for us all. Your wisdom, our guide. Your justice, our strength. Your grace, our path to rebirth. And so we cry mercy. 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 And so we cry glory. 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 And so we cry blessing. Blessing. Holy God, we beg for your spirit. Enliven this bread. Awaken this body. Pour us out for each other. Transfigure our minds, ignite your church, nourish the life of the earth. Make us while many united, make us the broken whole, make us despite death alive. And so we cry, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. And so the church shouts, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And so the earth pleads. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. You, Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, our life, our mercy, our might, our table, our food, our server, our rainbow, our ark, our dove, our sovereign, our water, our wine, our light, our treasure, our tree, our way, our truth, our life. You, Holy God, Holy One, Holy Three, Praise now, praise tomorrow, praise forever. And so we cry, Amen. Amen. And together as children of Jesus, we pray the prayer that he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We invite you to take your bread, and here are the words. The bread that we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And take your cup. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Break off a piece. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. And broken for you as well. And take the cup and let us drink it together. The blood of Christ shed for you. receiving. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our hymn of affirmation is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Let's sing together. upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go now in peace.
It was so good to have you with us for our Eucharist service today. I am glad that you worshiped with us. I pray that you were blessed in this time of worship together. As always, I suggest to you that you adopt the posture of Jesus and be generous to those around you and to yourself, to your neighbor, your family, your church. It is important that we give of ourselves to others, just as Jesus has given to us. It's a wonderful day here in Willow, Alaska. I pray that it is a wonderful day where you are. And just to give you a, a little bit extra, uh, keep stay on our video because at the very end we have a moose visiting and you can see that there. Blessings upon you.